Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Anime Podcasters. I'm your host, Hotshot Ginger, and with me I have my brother in arms, the well, I don't really have any more uh tie-ins with what we're discussing about today, so I'm just gonna introduce him. GoPro Kyo, how's it going, buddy? Hello. I'm in the closet. He's in the closet, where he belongs, in his hole. Mm-hmm. In my hole. So, was having issues coming up with uh, Clever Anecdotes to name you, because today we're <laughs> finally discussing Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, a show that Kyo has been trying to get me to watch for literal years, <laughs> and at one point he succeeded, and then I stopped, and then multiple years later, here I am, finally having finished it. Yeah, I think it the first time around it bogged you down a little bit, because we got so, so far into it. And then, like, you're just like, I think I need a break from this. And I'm like, okay. And then the break lasted for, like, two years. <laughs> to be fair, the show, like, it gets way real. Like, really real. <laughs> really quickly. I discovered, I think, the best way to do it was to just, like, uh, do it once a week. Because that's how we ended up doing it. We we did, yeah. like, uh, what, like, ten episodes each weekend, I think. Something like that. And, like one weekday we did like three or four yeah and i think that was just when the new uh when the new pokemon came out and i think that was it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but f- but finally having gone through the threshold like if i can take three months to ke- to watch episode one from one piece all the way up to the time skip i can make like two or three weekends to watch and finish full metal alchemist <laughs> <laughs> Well, like if and we did it the way if we're we're if we did it the way I said we did, it took us like basically a month to catch up all the way from start to finish because we just finished yesterday. And that's just if we watched on the uh, in the week on the weekends. Yeah, I, I don't think we watched it on the weekdays because weekdays are just like uh, I'm too tired to let full Full Metal Alchemist get down my spirits. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Work is already getting down my spirits. Why do I need a show to do that for me when life does it for me? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the argument of the century but, right now, right? But I, w- I will come out of the gate and say that Full Metal Alchemist has had a reputation of being the best, not just shonen, but best anime created for a very long time. And I say it well, it damn well deserves that title. Yeah, I, I can't help but agree. I mean, like, I think uh, I think the real uh, the point where it becomes like a point of contention is like uh, anime is so subjective that uh, really it comes down to personal taste. Uh, but I think most people can agree that Full Metal Alchemist does deserve the title of one of the best animes ever made. And I do think uh, if you had to put together like a top five, it's definitely in the top five, maybe the top three. Is um is it in your personal top ten? It, it's Just it's in mine. Yeah, I I would say so. It's not. It's it's in what I would call like the uh, the critic top ten, like the side of you that's like I know what's good and what's bad uh, animes or shows, and it's like it's in that list of like oh um, I know how to look at something as somebody who creates stuff and uh, I highly respect it, but FMA for me is also kind of in my top ten. Uh, the only reason it's not in my top five is because it uh my, my tastes are a little bit different from uh what the fr- from what it is i mean yeah no i totally get that for for my top 10 i could probably end up bumps bumping something out and put it somewhere in there <laughs> but like you my top five it's i have like such a specific taste and niche in the anime that mm. i don't know if i could put fma in the five but I could probably find something to bump out of the 10 to put it in there. No, yeah, well, the, the thing is, like, everybody can agree that it's one of the best ever made. And, uh... Yeah. But, but the thing is, like, it's... To me, like, one of your favorite shows has to be something that you're willing to watch more than once. And in my... And, uh, for me, I've wa- I have watched it twice. Hell, I've actually watched it three times, if you count the original anime from 2003. <laughs> it's also one of those shows where, like, even if you do watch it more than once, you can find something new that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. Like, in the, uh, and by the way, guys, major spoilers ahead if uh, if you're listening to this, because we did finish the show, so we're talking about the entirety of the show. So, yeah. just heads up. So in the final fight where Father is dying... <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> when, uh, 
so when the portal is opening in him, you said you never saw the eye like coming out of his mouth before. Uh, yeah, uh, that was so fucking gross. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like one of those one of those small minute details that you don't really think about unless you're yeah. looking at like the entire screen, mm-hmm. and it just adds to the adds to the factor of oh god, this is fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, like uh, again, I had I have seen this show once before, and uh, when you watch something for the first time, you're kind of a little more attentive, I think, or correction. Uh, you're not as attentive when you've seen it, uh, when you're seeing it for the first time. Cause you're kind of, yeah, I feel like you get wrapped up in like one thing at a time, sort of like, uh, in your, in your case, there are moments where you're like, Oh, holy shit, this fight's awesome. But you're not really thinking about the story. So like your brain kind of gets tunnel vision on like, oh, this fight is really cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then story happens is like, no, go back to punching each other in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, Austin, if you wanted that, you should be watching Dragon Ball. Yeah, fair. <laughs> so j- when we when we jumped into it or when you convinced me to jump into it the first time, I think I was making my favorite character like having to be Ed because I'm such a hero whore. Mm. That like the the main character of any series more often than not ends up being my favorite character. So I was a little surprised with myself that the further in we watched, the closer I actually felt towards Alphonse instead of Ed. Like, don't get me wrong. I love bro brothers in their own right. But my favorite character is probably Al. I don't blame you. Uh, Al is probably one of the better characters of the show. Um in my in my opinion, like the I, I feel like what makes Al such a strong character is that even though he he has the voice of a younger brother, he is the younger brother, but like they're relatively in a similar age range, so they're like two, three years apart. I think. I think they're only like two or one, actually. Yeah, because uh, I think I think Al was like eight, and or Al was like seven, and Ed was eight when everything happened, right? I Something think like that. so. I don't actually remember the exact ages, but yeah, they were like definitely under the age of 10 when the whole story went down. So during the show, Ed was 15 and 16. Uh huh. Because there was over a year that they spent in here. Yeah. And Al was, Al was 14, 15. So yeah, they're two years apart. Okay. But yeah, the, uh, it, it's kind of funny because the show sort of portrays, uh, Al as being, younger especially with the voice actress uh, doing a younger register uh, they also give dialogue choices that make Al seem a little more childish especially at first um, but the, the 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 strength of Alphonse is that he is younger but he's dealing with probably more issues than Ed because just imagine being in a situation where you uh, you've lost your body and all that you have left is basically sight and sound so you don't have touch you uh, you still feel things but you can't touch and actually feel with your hands or uh, eat sleep or really anything so like you're missing a lot of the the things that like make up what a human is and through that you kind of have to imagine like how is he so hopeful and how is he like how is he so optimistic for like getting his body back and everything like i i feel like that's where alphonse strength as a character lays I think a big part of that is all is uh, what he gets from Ed too. Like Ed's drive to never give up on something. Yeah. Like it might. Yeah. Some people might just call it him being stubborn, but it's mm. also just a drive of this is what we've decided to do. So this is what we're going to do. Yeah. The the thing is that like the brothers cannot exist without each other is kind of the thing. I, I'm saying like uh, on a conceptual level of like the story. They can't, yeah. or these characters cannot function without one another, at least in terms of the writing. They both are a source of inspiration and strength for one another. So the little brother is looking up to uh, his big brother for strength, and the big brother is looking to the uh, the innocence and the uh, the hope of. Uh, of the little brother for 
a source of inspiration and strength. So they they draw from each other in the sense that they are both motivated to do it for each other just as much as they are motivated to do it for themselves. Yeah, which I mean, uh, I mean, to, just to build on that, like in the beginning of the show, the brothers were kind of attached to the hip about yeah. just leaning on no one else but each other. But then as the show was going on, they end up getting separated more uh, more and more often. So yeah. you were seeing like the individual skills and strengths of, of each of them. And that's something that I really loved mm-hmm. until it got to the boiling point of, again, in the final battle, where Al sacrificed his soul back to the Door of Truth so Ed could get his arm back to finish the fight. Like, that, that was... Uh, among many, that was one of the most heavy jaw dropping scenes I saw in this show, because just seeing Al's destroyed armor body just collapse on the ground, and Ed have his arm back, I was in complete shock because I didn't think that's how he got his arm back. <laughs> well, like I, I I remembered how most of this goes down, so like the. I remembered like snippets of it because again I didn't watch it I haven't watched it for like god I don't know how long it's been probably like probably since high school since I watched uh, this show originally and seeing it as an actual adult now I think I understand it a lot more than I did before I understand like the like all of it like as somebody who's creative but I also understand it as uh, just conceptually as like why all of this is uh makes sense uh why all of this works on an emotional level as well as a writing level okay so as someone who actually has seen it more than once and someone who claims to understand it uh help me understand (laughs) something okay (laughs) what the hell was the dwarf in the glass actually trying to do uh it's literally trying to uh, uh obtain all the power that it possibly can and it it's the the thing is it's meant to be a representation of the worst of humanity because it is literally all of the sins brought together because it's made by humanity it's also the worst that humanity has to offer so it also consumes and it grows but the the idea of it is that it's a dark reflection of what human uh, of what people are okay because when the when the dwarf was essentially being dragged to hell mm-hmm. he was just like i wanted to learn i only wanted to learn i'm like open a book or something <laughs> you didn't have to do all this 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 was a bit much like you deserve what happens to you and my god i was so happy when ed was just beating your ass <laughs> the, the, like unlike to make it to make unlike, it a little more clear the the when you when you get to the ending and like Ed has that conversation with uh, God or Truth or whatever you want to call it, uh, the whole point is that it that uh, Ed now understands the meaning of what life is, but uh, the dwarf doesn't understand because it's not truly human. It's just a creation of what of the worst of what humans have to offer but it's missing that human element and that's why it it failed it was going about everything the wrong way whereas al has gone through or sorry ed has gone through all of these uh horrible horrible situations and has still come out as a good person and he's come out realizing that alchemy is not the the explanation to everything it's that humanity is the explanation to everything and it's the what we draw uh it's what we draw from uh community and uh love and affection and just uh basically (laughs) basically just boils down to uh being a good person and understanding what makes a human a human okay does that make sense i mean yeah no yeah that makes a lot more sense than father (laughs) because <laughs> when again when he was being dragged and just said I just wanted to learn I'm like dude they have encyclopedias in your world I'm sure <laughs> yeah yeah the, the whole point is that uh, the dwarf is jealous of humans yeah so like when because we... I mean like that seemingly was his strongest trait <laughs> yeah well like when when each homunculus dies it's a sen- like each homunculus dies for a reason that is kind of ironic to the sin so like 
uh, gluttony dies from being eaten by just uh, j- just consumption. By pride. Yeah. yeah. Uh, lust dies from uh, uh, lust Burns. dies from fire. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the it, fire's harder lust, to fire's a passion. It's hard to find a connection with her. Yeah, it's harder, but <laughs> it, it is there. The but uh, the point is, like, each homunculus dies in a way that is ironic to the sin. Like, uh, envy dies because they are uh, envious and jealous of humans, but they off themselves because they they simply just can't become human. And that's also and reflected then... in the fact that envy uh, mimics people, but it doesn't understand, like, what it really means to be human. And then wrath, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, the whole fight that led up to wrath's final death... Mm-hmm. And then he just like peacefully died mm-hmm. at the end of it. I'm just like, I wanted Lon Fawn to just like stab him repeatedly <laughs> over and over <laughs> just because of how much like I felt like he didn't get enough comeuppance. He just had like one bad fight and that was it. Unlike Who, the fucking is. Yeah, because oh, okay. like that one bad fight and it's like, OK, this is where I die. And it's not even because anyone killed me. It's because everything's done so i'm just gonna peace out yeah unlike a certain unlike a certain has fallen that i'm (laughs) still really upset that no one got to beat his ass at least once like badly (laughs) like he was still walking around fine and he wasn't even that gravely injured when fighting bradley i'm really pissed that scar got away scot-free with everything (laughs) i love scar as a character but as a villain i'm like no you need punishment (laughs) Which which actually brings me to a thought that I wanted to bring up. Um, do you think that Scar was a necessary character? Honestly, yeah. Because we needed a tie to It's Fallen. Mm. Like we had we had the others fallen in Briggs. Yeah. Which him I felt like we could have done without. I felt like Scar could have just realized everything. Yeah. But I feel like Scar was was a pivotal point for a lot of people. Mm. Like for him him having killed Winry's parents just out of pure rage and him just seeing destruction as the only answer, but then growing to see that it's cooperative and rebuilding everything as well as destruction. Like there's a delicate balance, like as a character and as he grows, there's more and more that he actually shows the audience about his growth. Yeah, I, I agree. But on, uh, at the same time, I almost feel like there was a better way to have used scar I think the the whole thing with losing his brother was not needed. <laughs> no, I mean like it was needed. Like I I totally understand like the whole uh, switching the arms between the brothers thing makes makes sense. I I see why, but I also feel like I didn't care enough about the brother for that to have mattered because the brother character kind of keeps showing up and he doesn't even have a freaking name by the way people he doesn't have a name yeah he doesn't he doesn't have a canon name in the show so we just lovingly named him steve yeah steven scar (laughs) steven scar (laughs) the but uh to to try and explain what i mean by that i mean that uh i feel like if you made the audience care a little bit more about scar's brother uh i don't know i feel i feel like there wasn't enough development for the brother i understand that the brother is more of a catalyst for scar but I feel like that's a bad way to write any character. Like a character has to me, be a character. It can't just be a it the the or a character can't just be somebody's reason for something. Like how you can't write a relationship around the idea of of oh, this character lives for that character. Yeah. Because you can't define a character by a relationship necessarily, or at least you can't yeah, you can't define a character by a relationship, but you can define a relationship between characters. Part of me feels like a better way to have used Scar would have been if he was the researcher and everything went to shit and he lost his... Let, let's say for a moment that he had um, both arms from the get-go, so he had the reconstruction arm and the destruction arm. Uh-huh. And he lost the reconstruction arm in the war, and it just made him question all of his beliefs and all of his research. Yeah, so that, that would, all he knew was yeah. would have been destruction. I, I think that would have been a better way to handle it. Uh, maybe the brother could have been uh, not, or maybe Scar could have been the researcher, and that would have made more sense. And like that would have been more because, interesting for him to like 
question all the stuff that he's learned about uh, both forms of alchemy and alkahestry. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that would have been a better way to do it, but the way that it has Let, been done, let's, it's still fine. Yeah, let's keep in mind that even if we are um, picking away at something, it is very nitpicky about is, something yeah. like this because, like, even even if we think like something could have been done another way. The way that it was done was still masterfully done. Yeah, it is. So, it's just uh, like being a creative person. Like you can all or you you tend to like pick. You can at, always improve. Yeah, you you tend to pick at your own work as well as other people's work, uh, wh- whether they want you to or not. But <laughs> um, yeah, like it, it, it's just us having kind of a critical eye of it from like an outside perspective by the way guys i'm just gonna bring it up because i know we're talking about fma brotherhood and i know there's gonna be some people talk or bitching about if we don't bring her up uh nina being turned into the chimera yes we know the memes we know the horror story it's horrendous it's evil and it's dark as hell that's it i'm done talking about it (laughs) i mean there's it's such a joke or it's it's such a joke that it's not even like like I said to you like I was writing this bit for uh for a video and I was just talking about like how the whole scene has kind of lost all meaning to me because it's been memed to hell and back. Yeah, exactly. So like I uh the the more something is is talked about, the less you want it to be talked about. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Like it's such an overexposed uh, scene that it's just like it's not funny anymore it's not the, like even even just like watching the show like just straight I can't not think about how many people have like made jokes about it and uh, how many people have been like oh that's messed up dude or whatever it, it's yeah. just lost its impact for me so like thanks anime fans you ruined the scene for me <laughs> Well, I mean, like, I'm kind of the same way when a certain anime has been talk- talked about or hyped up to hell and back that I'm just like, I'm just going to avoid this for now because if I say I started watching it, everyone's going to say, oh, have you gotten to so-and-so yet? I'm like, no. And then just everything goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I can, I can understand the overexposure and I completely agree. Like, don't get me wrong, watching it in the core show it's still dark as hell. And oh, yeah, it, hell. it absolutely is. It's just that, like... It, it's just, you can't really say anything about it that hasn't already been said. Yeah. And once it leaves, you're just kind of like, okay, that happened. Yeah, exactly. There, there's no there's no impact to it anymore. Everybody's made so many jokes. You can't make a joke about it anymore because people are, like, on one hand, people are like, oh, I'm still messed up from that scene from when I watched FMA. Really? That's the part that you're messed up about, not the part where there's, like, millions of souls living on Envy's fucking body. There's a fucking baby that's reaching out for Edward's hand, and it's, like, uh, it's like yanking on his coat and something. Like, how is that not more messed up? <laughs> yeah, no. Like, the Chimera's fucked. It is by far not the least, or not the it's most It's actually the least messed up thing in the whole show, and it everybody talks about it because it's in the first four or five episodes. That's the only reason it's still so relevant. <laughs> One one thing that actually light, lightly ticks me off about it is we started that whole that whole scene with uh, the doctor trying to make a walking, talking, breathing chimera that could speak. Uh huh. And then like we see the the failed ex- or we see this experiment succeed. Nina's turned into a horrible monster. Yeah. But then later on down the show, I know these have been made by the bad guys, but later on down the show. You have normal looking humans who can just turn into a lion or a toad or a gorilla or a hog. Yeah. And they look totally fine if they're not in their animal form. And I'm just like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> it could have been done just that easily. We could have just gotten Nina as a dog and we would have been fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. That, ju- that just means that her dad was shit at his job. Yeah. That's all that means. I've because seen these guys weren't even these guys weren't even made like with philosopher stones. They were just made. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, it's yeah. I think we spent a lot of time talking about it already. Uh, but yeah, no, overall, the thing I, to take I do from wanna... it is like just just see the show. If you haven't seen the show, but you already know the dog scene, just watch the rest of the show because that's not the most messed up thing in the whole show. That's easily no. the 
that's technically the tamest thing that the show does. I do want to talk uh, a little bit more about actual chimeras, though, that we get later on in the show. Yeah, as long as it's not Nina. No, yeah, no, she's done. <laughs> she's she's dead. Scar killed her and her father dead. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. So I was actually going to ask you, out of all the uh, new chimeras that we got, I was going to ask you who your favorite one was. And that includes uh, Greed's old uh, party pals. Oh, uh, hmm. Dang, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, I like the four uh, that stay all the way to the end that are uh, Stardust Kimberly's uh, goons. Yeah. I like those guys a lot, actually. Um, are you just asking, like, which uh, Chimera I like the most? Like, just on on, on what level, like I guess, for, is what I'm asking. Like, for design and ability-wise, I guess I'm okay. saying. Yeah. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> when, when I think about like the the gorilla guy, I just think that it's just the guy, but like hairier. <laughs> That's kind of what I see too, and I'm just like, okay, I know you're, I know you're gorilla, and I know humans, apes, like it's a whole thing. But yeah. really, can you try like a little bit more? <laughs> it make him look a little bit more like a monkey or something. <laughs> like round out his face or something. <laughs> yeah, give him the give him the weird monkey nose where it's like. It looks like a snoot, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the two, the, the two that come immediately to my mind, at least, are uh, the lion chimera that sticks around, uh huh, and uh, the snake chimera from Greed's old crew, the one that dies inside of Al. Oh yeah, mm, yikes! <laughs> yeah, that whole scene. Yeah, you want to see a fucked up scene in FMA? That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, Al is literally sitting there, like he's actually looking at his hands after, like they see all the blood and stuff inside of the ar- the suit of armor and they're like we had to take the body out and he's like oh <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's already live fucking that for a while. by that <laughs> well i mean yeah you're you're a hollowed out uh, tin tin of a man and someone is hiding in you that you're trying to save they get killed you get knocked out you open your chest is gone yeah. and there's just blood pissing out of you <laughs> Yeah, no, that that fuck anybody up. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, there is a a longer version of that scene in the original, but oh, like God. the snake girl actually lives, I think. Really? Yeah. So like she huh. lives, there's actually a scene, you know the scene where like Bradley realizes what happened to Ed and Al. So like he already knows, so now he knows like why they're they're messed up and that Al has no uh no body. Yeah. He's like don't worry, Alphonse, you don't have to eat just for appearances, but, like, the girl is inside and she's actually hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, I always remember that because that was a really funny scene, but, like, it, he's about to, like, put a biscuit in his si- inside his mouth, but, like, he puts it down and she's like, aw. That's just upsetting, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday we'll watch through the original. The original's really interesting and weird, but, uh, but we're talking about Brotherhood and brotherhood is a whole new beast (laughs) yeah and that's that's the common consensus is a it's a whole new beast and b it's a lot better (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't know if you saw that much of the original one the original one was very very odd i i have not but we'll we'll check it out eventually we may or may not do an episode on it but we'll at least check it out i don't know if i'll finish it I, i remember i said to you like in at some point like after I think it was like within the first 10 to 15 episodes or something. I said that the original is a interesting what if sort of uh sort of idea at this point because Yeah, cuz it was it was going past the where the manga was, right? The manga It, it was adding out. so much stuff that wasn't even in the manga uh, as I recall. Um I haven't read the manga. I have like two volumes on our manga shelf and those are the only bits that I've read. But uh I do know for a fact that they added a lot of stuff. Like, the first couple of episodes for the original from 2003 is, like, they come to this town and there's this guy who uh, creates, like, these uh, mannequins that have some form of sentience. I think he actually was using a Philosopher's Stone to bond uh, souls to the bodies or something. Okay. (laughs) I don't actually remember because it was very... It's really weird. (laughs) Yeah, it already sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing, I know this is a very generic uh, question, but mm. I'm just curious because a lot of the characters in FMA are 
like wholly unique and amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but like my favorite hero character is is Al. Mm. Um, who is who would you say one of your or one of if not your favorite? Uh, support character is support character um because i'm actually i'm actually torn between two on this one let's hear yours first i'm curious i'm torn between hawkeye because i love hawkeye (laughs) hawkeye's a badass uh, yeah (laughs) and uh teacher yeah fair because whenever whenever teacher shows up i have a good time (laughs) (laughs) she's a lot better in this than she is in the original in the original she's kind of a little more She's a little too hard ass on the on the boys like throughout the show. Uh, in, throughout in the, the entirety, original. yeah. Oh, geez. teacher, but, come on, you're better than this. <laughs> Obviously, you're in brotherhood. <laughs> she she acts or they 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 show more of her uh, her mom side in in brotherhood, and it's much more appreciated. Okay. I feel. I I would I would probably say Hawkeye would would just barely edge her out because yeah. Hawkeye is like cool, Hawkeye is like cool exterior, but then. When you get past that and showing like how deeply she actually cares, not just for Mustang, but the boys and yeah. everything that they're doing is honest to God, it's heartwarming to me. Yeah. And then her and her dog is just so freaking adorable. <laughs> there, there's something about like she she's she's kind of just uh she's kind of a mood. She ha she's the she's the single a uh, badass lady who has a dog at home. So, like, you know there's a soft side to her. <laughs> what kind of mood are you in? Uh, you know, I'm kind of feeling like a Hawkeye. <laughs> just, don't, just don't fuck with me and let me pet my dog. And yeah, I'll pretty much. Alone. <laughs> uh, Would you say you have, like, have, like, one or two or three that you could name off? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to not say uh, Hawkeye also, but... Uh, yeah. Hmm... I'd say Havoc's one of my favorite side characters. I love Havoc. Havoc's <laughs> <He's>, amazing. <laughs> Havoc is so cool. <laughs> I was so I was so upset when uh well when everything that happened to him and he got paralyzed. Yeah. But then at the yeah. end when Roy said, No, you have something else to do first and Havoc came on screen, I'm like, Yes, yes, my <laughs> boy, he's back. <laughs> Because e- even though even though it was short lived, when when all of Ho- when all of uh, Mustang's team were together and working together, yeah. Hawkeye was my favorite part of that team, with the exception of Hawkeye. But still, just seeing Wait. Havoc kick some ass. <laughs> you said Hawkeye with the exception of Hawkeye. <laughs> no, Havoc was my favorite with the exception of Hawkeye. Like, yeah, Hawkeye had just him out, but still, I loved Havoc. Uh, crap! I feel bad. Uh, what was uh? What were the two characters that were assigned to Ed and Alice, like uh, escorts, uh, Lieutenant Ross, and what was the other guy's name? I'm really upset. I do not know. <laughs> I love them. They were so. <laughs> they, they were clearly like just uh, best friends, and that's all that it was. And like it's a very different relationship than it is between uh, Roy and Hawkeye. But uh, <laughs> Ross and the and the guy soldier are such such cute characters together <laughs> i mean you saw how attached i i even got to him because when uh when ross's fake death showed up on screen i know you looked looked at me and i was just like no 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 i loved her i loved her <laughs> and then a few episodes later when she sees she's alive and then just my sheer joy <laughs> <laughs> yes i knew my thing wasn't a murderer well he is but not to her <laughs> Not for the same reasons. <laughs> Not for the same reasons. Yeah, I was I was really happy when when she came back, and then seeing them reunite and like the final arc just uh, so it warmed cute. my heart. It really the, did. the moment where he's like walking up to her, like arms raised, and then he starts crying and hugs her. It's like oh, <laughs> I can't really say I blame him because I mean the two are partners for God knows how long. No, yeah, I service. know. <laughs> That's the whole point. There, there's a there's a lot of uh, like partners that could be you know partners but um it isn't ever actually like officially confirmed in this show yeah like uh the only one that actually does end up being confirmed i i feel at least by the ending photo is uh ed and ed and winry and alan <laughs> may because why else would may be there in like the family photo with everybody like al al clearly got with may <laughs> <laughs> well he did go to shing so Who's to say yeah. something didn't happen there? <laughs> well, because she she came back with him, and at that point, Ed and Winry had their two kids, and she was in a family photo with everybody. 
So I'm I'm to believe that uh, May and Al actually did get together. Yeah. But one one that I'm talking about that like didn't end up together, but it feels like so natural that they could be would be like Hawkeye and Mustang. Yeah. Or Ross and the other guy soldier. His name is like on the tip of my tongue. I keep forgetting about it. I know. (laughs) I feel so bad. I feel so bad for Havoc. He fell for lust and damn it, Havoc. (laughs) (laughs) A man after your own heart. (laughs) He's like, damn it, she's evil. Fuck. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) She's evil, but she's hot. (laughs) I got catfish. She said she was good. She said she was a cop. She said she was fine. I mean, she's fine, but she's evil. I found it really but funny like that like the only that her disguise is literally just a sweater just to cover up her tattoo. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when homunculus disguise themselves with the exception of Envy, they looked like they could just be normal everyday people just hiding in the crowd. Yeah. Except Gluttony. Gluttony I don't really think could hide that well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing Men's, him like Men's. wearing like a big thick coat or something like just to cover up his outfit. I'm picturing him like because he he talks and walks and kind of looks like Winnie the Pooh. So I'm imagining <laughs> him just in like a big red big red shirt. <laughs> like so still in his uniform like waist down but just in the red shirt just walking around happily with lust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, there um, was a uh, I, I remember, I think in the original, like, Gluttony goes a little more crazy when he finds out Lust is dead. <laughs> I, that's what I was hoping for, but then it, I just saw Gluttony get depressed, ate some food, and got over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was still upset. I was just upset, like, no, I want just... you to go batshit insane. <laughs> <laughs> he was still upset, just not as much as you thought he'd be. <laughs> uh, this is probably a cop-out, and yeah, it'll it'll follow up, and I'll ask you for yours, too. Uh-huh. Uh, my My favorite homunculus was probably Greed. Really? Like I again, I know it's a cop out cuz he's the only one that fought with the heroes, but mm. just the fact that we actually see Greed grow as a character as opposed well, to the, the others. Yeah, that's the point. Like the the point that's is that the whole he point. he kind of gets the he, he kind of gets what the other homunculus didn't, like what it means to be human, like a sense of community is kind of what makes people people, you know. Yeah. And then when he had a even more when he had Ling's body and just their their whole dynamic together. I'm just like, why does it make the most sense for Ling to be the one to talk him down? What the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. It works. Like, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And Ling with greed made A, a hell of a fighter, and B, a cool-ass design. <laughs> <laughs> and, C, and C, just a cooperation that made sense in my head. Yeah. Even though, uh, even though Lon Fan and... Uh, Fu wanted nothing to do with greed. Like we're protecting the body of the young lord. I get it, but it's the same <laughs> ass. <laughs> I didn't remember that joke, but it, it kind of is on the same level as like that's America's ass from like Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it really kind of was. The same, it's and the same that, kind of joke. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, this that line cannot be used in everyday conversation. But just hearing Greed saying, thanks for saving my ass, I was saving the body of the young lord. That's the same ass. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a line you can use in everyday conversation, but it is one of my favorite lines that we've come across. <laughs> I can't blame you. It's, pro- it's probably one of the best lines written in the show. <laughs> yeah. But like even with even with as few characters as as we've talked about, I know we've ta- we've talked about a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that many because there's still Armstrong, um, Olivier, Hughes and his family, all uh, of Briggs. Um, that's the other. Rose, that was the other the meme. dad. <laughs> that's the other meme from uh, Full Metal is uh, Hughes dying. Yeah, it's just that he looks like Markiplier. It's like, all right, well, now I don't feel bad. <laughs> Here's the thing: I feel worse about Hughes dying than Nina. I'll just say it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an that's an actual death that has uh, some consequence in my in my mind. <laughs> yeah, because it drives Mustang to the point of damn near insanity. <laughs> yeah. Then when he finds Envy, the one that killed Hughes, just damn near snaps. Yeah. <laughs> like th- this is this is one that actually has long term consequences. Meanwhile, Envy just drops the tit fact like, what about that dog girl? He killed her too, and you're working with him? It's just like, 
that happened like a year ago. <laughs> Pretty. Much. There's a lot of thing. There's a lot of things happening here. Yeah. Like you, you say killed killed the dog girl, and then say killed Winry's parents. Like there's a connection that's going to be stronger with Ed. I mean, don't get me wrong. They they carry the Nina thing with them well into when they grow up. Even Al says so when he's uh, talking to Hugh's family. Yeah. But still, but still, it's not the one that has consequences in the long run. It's the one that has the least, like, uh, story consequence in my mind, because I feel like they were closer with uh, with Hughes than they were with Nina. Nina, they just knew Hell, for a day, cl- and then the kid just fucking got turned into a monster. <laughs> Hell, they were closer to Barry the Chopper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's messed they up. were closer. They were closer to an actual serial killer, and I felt worse about his death than Nina. <laughs> it's weird that Don't they made wrong. you feel Nina's bad fucked, about that. But <laughs> they made me feel bad that a serial killer's armor and he was just gone. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why do you, why do you make me feel bad for him? Why do you make him cute? Why do you make a serial killer cute? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, I do want to pu- uh, pull this one out there. You, you uh, like, I think the first couple times you saw Gluttony, you were like, why is he so cute? <laughs> because he's adorable. Like, yeah, he's homunculus and he's evil and he needs to die, but he's adorable. He is kind of like a, like, Lust's baby brother in a way, like the way that they hang out. <laughs> yeah. Or like her pet, kind of, because she kept yeah. petting him, too. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Like, he seems like the lowest on the totem pole in terms of the at like out of all the homunculus, but like the the way she like coddles him a little bit and treats him like a, like her kid or her or her pet or whatever. <laughs> like it's not clear like where it is, but like you know it's in one of those three camps. It's kind of a mix of the three. <laughs> yeah, even though I think the. Uh... Like, as far as battle power goes, I think the weakest, when you get down to it, between the homunculi, would actually be Envy. Mm, yeah. Because, I mean, he... I mean, his is just a big-ass dragon. Yeah. You avoid the tail, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the I mean, if you think about it, Envy is the one who has been beaten the most, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gluttony could eat literal fire, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair. Good point. Like, Gluttony could eat anything, including fire... Um, greed has an impenetrable shield as long as you don't know what it's made of. Yeah. Lust has has finger spears, so maybe she's actually the weakest when it comes to combat. Mm, um, yeah, probably. She's Wrath, probably one of the smarter ones, I think. Wrath could basically see the future and see attacks as long as he saw you. Yeah. Pride, Pride's the strongest, I feel. Yeah. Like, as long as he's in shadows. If you don't have him in shadows, then he's just a baby boy. <laughs> and that that's that's it. You get him in shadows and you have no morals, pride's done. <laughs> yeah. That Austin kept saying this like during the uh, like whenever pride was showing up it was like we about to kill a child. <laughs> Keep in mind I'm talking about pride and FMA brotherhood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just want to clarify that. I was saying I just said like whenever he came on screen you're like time to kill a child. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just letting the audience know, like, I'm not that horrible a person, but this was also a monster. Yeah. So, in the body of a child. So, we got to kill a child. <laughs> you got excited about the strangest things, I think, and during this show, but hey, it's anime. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so strange, strange was just going to be a thing. Like, I was, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt, like, all the way through, and then the final bit where father like is coming out of the earth stretching up to the heavens through a door into god yeah that's when it got weird <laughs> <laughs> that's when i'm like this isn't fma anymore this is berserk or soul eater or something <laughs> there's no science to this i love how berserk and soul eater are sort of in the same camp for you like mentally <laughs> i mean they are with the appearance of this like with all the mouths and the eyes and like the like kind of nightmares creatures like a Keishin, yeah or like the millions of souls dying like in berserk yeah and then like they lit berserk literally has a soul egg that has like a nose eye a mouth and everything on it a biomet egg or yeah. how do you say it and it just reminded me of like everything the dwarf in the glass was doing or pride's uh, shadows or what have you 
It just reminds like me so that, much of Berserk. <laughs> I, I just like that they're like on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of creep factor, but like really they are kind of like two sides of the same coin if you think about it. <laughs> just Soul Eater plays everything a little bit more of a on more of a goofy Halloweeny vibe, I guess. Yeah. Was there a was there a character in here that like you didn't really care one way or the other if anything good or bad happened to him? Uh, pfft, dang. Uh, not gonna lie, I feel I kind of feel that way about Scar. Okay, I like, feel that way about Doctor Marco. Really? I didn't really care about him like at all. Mm. I, every time, every time I saw him on screen, I'm like, oh, good, nothing's about to happen. <laughs> What are you talking about? He beat he well, beat I mean, Envy like, no, the first time <laughs> with a car. <laughs> no, he that wasn't him. Oh wait, no, yeah, no, I got that mixed up. That was uh, that was the mustache guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't remember his name at all. Uh, I, yeah, he beat it, he beat Envy Yosh- the he Yoshi. I think so. Something like that. <laughs> Let's call him Yoshi. Yeah, he's Yoshi now. <laughs> I mean. I mean, I get that Dr. Marco actually was helpful, like, show the boys the truth about the Philosopher's Stone, or, like, warn them about it. Um, was helping Scar and May all throughout their journey, and eventually healed uh, Mustang's eyes and Havoc. Like, I'm not gonna deny he's done things, but whenever he was on screen in the middle, like, story stuff, I'm just like, I don't care about you, really. I don't. <laughs> He, he's not I, you, the. Unfortunately, he's not the most well written out of the characters. I think he kind of was lacking in terms of like, oh, uh, this is another military type character like Mustang who regrets what he did in the war, uh, and he's trying to make amends somehow. But uh, I, I guess because he's a doctor, fair, you kind of already uh, have the thought of like, oh, he he's not all that bad. He's a doctor. It's fine. <laughs> To be fair, when you have so many characters written as good as they are in a show like this, you can forgive like one or two that are being written like, yeah, we didn't really pay much attention to this guy until the final until the final parts. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's written by literally one person. Like this is all written by one person. Yeah, we're gonna cut him some slack because because <laughs> yeah. yeah, she did even what she if could. this is <laughs> yeah, even if this is voted one of the greatest anime or manga of all time. There's only so much that one person can do. Yeah. I I, I do agree. She kind of stretched herself... Or Hiromu Arakawa. She kind of stretched herself a little bit thin with how many characters she wrote. But I like I, like I said uh, last, to- or last week, I think, uh, every character gets like a big moment of some kind, or at least they all have like a purpose in the story. Yeah. Sorry. Brain farted there for a sec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. I think I have one more one more question, then we'll start wrapping things up. Okay. Um do you have a favorite fight, or at least a fight that stands out to you a lot? <sighs> uh I was gonna say the final fight, but the the fight that always sticks out in my mind is always uh Roy versus Lust. Yeah, okay. I'm I'll give you that one. But it it's probably the most like it's the earliest in the story that, like, if you see just this part of the show, you can either get invested and, or you can get invested and not be necessarily spoiled uh, just yet. I mean, like, yeah, there are story beats that, like, if you just take the start to end of the fight, where, like, you might be like, oh, what's this? Like, if you haven't seen it before. But I feel like it's the most interesting, and I think it's the most like memorable scene uh i remember like when you first saw it you were like oh damn (laughs) i mean yeah because like if i mean during that fight or really anytime mustang fights just hearing the constant snaps and the fire just exploding yeah just and seeing lust melt over and over and over and over again is brutal as hell yeah then he does it again to envy i'm like "Eh, roy buddy Use a stick or something. <laughs> Just seeing these people melt to a crisp. I know you're turning them to ash, but damn. <laughs> Usually it just takes one snap and that's it. They're done. No, this this takes a lot more. Well, like, uh, <laughs> I, I actually think that Envy got the worst of it because, like, uh, it kept happening 
over and over and Roy was not even like Roy wasn't holding yeah, back exactly. with, with like, Envy he might he might have been with Lust no he was just 110% done with Envy well like when when he did it with Lust I feel like it was like more along the lines of like he's injured so he's not going to be able to do it at his full potential yeah but like with Envy, Envy he was at he was at peak physical form uh he didn't or he didn't lose his gloves uh he still had his flame alchemy uh but but yeah like <laughs> and was getting revenge for hughes which yeah if you're kill if you're killing for revenge you're you're done <laughs> yeah you just lose yourself to your power you don't hold back on anything exactly one that uh the one that stands out to me the most and this may not even be my favorite fight but it's just the one that stands out is uh in the prison where the boys are separated and they're fighting the suits of armor oh uh, yeah mm, that is a good scene because that's like the first time that you see uh someone other than the boys has performed uh human transmutation uh-huh. and there are other suits of armor walking around it's a really and... cool idea for some reason it's kind of a it, it kind of makes me think of like either the warforged from D D or uh like a golem you know what i mean yeah, yeah, and just the the exchange between Al and uh, and Barry, it's like, huh, aren't you gonna ask what happened to my body? And Al just takes off his head. Al, what happened to your body? <laughs> <laughs> like same damn thing that happened to yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like Ed having absolute faith in Al, saying that we've sparred over a hundred times, and if you're having this much trouble against me, here's the thing. I still have never beaten him. <laughs> and just having that, that level of confidence in your brother, I, I loved it. Yeah. The only thing I didn't love was at the end of it, Al just having an existential crisis of like, am I an actual soul or am I a robot? Yeah. Like that, that whole, that whole mini arc, like spanning two episodes, I just didn't care for, but no. Yeah. That, oh, that's well. fair. It's a very, <laughs> it, it's a very nothing story beat. Really? It it doesn't make it. Yeah. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It it actually makes the least sense out of all the weird shit that happens in this show. <laughs> and that's the thing. There's a lot of weird shit that happens in the show, and there's always an explanation for it. Here it's just like, yeah, sorry, I doubted you. Like, what yeah, the yeah, fuck? pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. the, the, considered the what, best anime and the or the one of the best anime ever made, it's still got some some problems. <laughs> yeah, which I mean. If it was a perfect, then it'd be boring. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, you got, you go, uh, brain fart. You want to go ahead with your uh, final thoughts and we'll start wrapping up? Um, really, the most I can say is like, if you haven't seen it, you need to. <laughs> it, it's one of those, like, uh, like I said earlier in the, uh, when we started, it, it's one of those critic top five or top 10 that you have to see and like, like like I said, FMA Brotherhood is still is one of the one of those animes that's like it, it is kind of special to me in in the sense that like I saw it when I was going through high school, uh, and like a lot of it spoke to me at that age. But now uh, now I'm an adult, uh, and having watched it again with Austin, and uh, having seen it having seen it now uh, with him and uh, discussing it with you. Uh, I, I feel it's uh, more uh, relevant than it was uh, when I first watched it. That's a terrifying thought. <laughs> that's, that's more relevant. <laughs> Just in um, the sense that, like, it's uh, it, it definitely is like one of the one of the best ones ever made. Like, it's still like it. It's a very well self-contained story, and like, it doesn't have to be period specific. It it stands out as like this is like a alternate version of earth and it has, and it's a very well self-contained story and it knows uh, how to keep it that way. And like, it doesn't matter what uh, year you see it in. And, you know, like I feel like it's one of those timeless series that you can watch like at any time in like, be it now or the future or like 10 years ago when it came out, like, you know, that's what I mean by relevant. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, all I can all I can really say is, like I said at the beginning, it's held a title of one of, if not the greatest anime ever, and it is a title it damn well deserves. Everything that we've had issues with, like 
it's it's like very 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 nitpicky and it's just it's natural to have some kind of constru- uh, constructive criticism to something you love but it's what we were picking at like scar not being the best or um or not or like some dr. characters marco. not being written or dr marco or some characters not being written as well as others like that is just nitpicking away at let's like Picking away small pieces of a giant, well done ham that you don't like or something, it's 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 null and void. Like it is still an amazing show. It is still, frankly, it's a masterpiece. And there's just one or two things that that you're gonna notice. But I'm glad I finally sat down and watched it. Um, it probably will be in my top ten. <laughs> I just have to find something to bump it out. If not, it's definitely in the top fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna make. Some I, people I love mad the with show. That one, I bet. <laughs> I I know I am, but guess what? My list, my rules. Get no, out. I know. <laughs> but I love the show. I love that we sat down with it, being one of the greatest of all time. It damn well deserves that title. And given the chance, yeah, I would probably end up watching it again, and I'd probably notice more that I didn't notice this time. I that said, uh, Kyo, you want to go ahead and plug your stuff? Uh, you guys can find me on YouTube at uh, GoPro Kyo, and you guys can also find me on Newgrounds at GoPro Kyo and uh, the same handle on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm not working on anything in particular right now. Uh, you guys will see more coming out from me fairly soon, though. All right. And as for the podcast, you guys can follow us on uh, social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Anime Podcasters. We post whenever new episodes come out, and we've started clipping away at some of our older episodes and posting those just to give you guys a little tidbit and see what you think. So go ahead and give us a follow wherever you can. And you guys can find me right here on the channel and on the podcast and over on my channel, Hotshot Ginger, and on Twitter at Hotshot Ginger, where I will do nothing but ghost you, and I will let you know as soon as I come up with more projects. (laughs) So that being said... This has been another episode of Anime Podcasters. Bye, guys. Bye.